We have another update from the situation that is taking place at FAMU with Isaiah Land and others. It uh, looks like more players will be available for the Orange Blossom Classic. And could Isaiah Land himself be ready to play this weekend against Jackson State? Let's talk about it after the bumper. Stay tuned. See what hear from his lawyer and what his lawyer is saying. Let's listen after the bumper. What's good, good people? My name is Jeff Lighty Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel of Victory Formation. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe, and notification bell because we upload every single day. Now, there are more updates in the case of the FAMU players getting eligibility. If some, if not more, most of them will be available to play this weekend in Miami on Sunday against Jackson State in the Orange Blossom Classic. Let me, we're going to show you a series of tweets put out by Pete Thamel of ESPN, by also Tom Mars, the, <clears throat> the lawyer representing Isaiah Land, Cam Corvin, and others, uh, as far as trying to get their eligibility stuff worked out with the university. So this was a tweet put out by Pete Thamel after speaking with head coach Willie Simmons. It says, FAMU coach Willie Simmons tells ESPN that the Rattlers are down to 17 ineligible players from 26 last weekend. So it looks like they've been able to work out some L, you know, some compliance issues with about nine guys so far. So they'll have more so far. So it says uh, I had 26 from last weekend for their game against Jackson State. The team is on the bus from Tallahassee to Miami. So they went down today. Uh, there's hope that some of those 17 can get cleared and make the trip. So that was one tweet put out by Pete Thamel. There was another tweet put out by Pete Thamel, and here it reads this. Attorney Tom Morris tells ESPN that he's optimistic about the eligibility cases of FAMU starters Isaiah Land and Cam Coven. He expects some resolution, quote, very soon in their request for reconsideration of their eligibility. He's appreciative of FAMU bringing in outside counsel. So it looks like, you know, Tom Mars' stance on FAMU, the university, has changed a little bit. First, he was very critical of FAMU and the way they were handling uh, the situation. But now he said he's happy that they're bringing in outside counsel to try to get some of this done. And also, I forgot to show you guys this. This is also from Pete Thamel. Let me go ahead and show you this. And then we'll share some of Tom Mars's tweets. It says, uh, this was he and said, he being Willie Simmons. I meant to show this after the last tweet. Uh, quote, vast majority of the eligibility issues. This is key right here. Issues were a clerical nature. Changes of majors or grades that didn't show up in the system. He's hoping more can be addressed in the upcoming days. Now think about that. Think about think about what he's saying. Most of the vast majority of the issues that ranged with the football team. Changes of majors, grades not showing up in the system. That has everything to do with the school. You know, for those who have been very critical of the players, and, and I'm sure the players can bear some of the blame. But changes of majors, grades not showing up in the system, that falls on the head of the school. That falls on the fact that they have one compliance officer in the entire athletics department. They have one academic advisor in the entire athletics department. We're talking about 300-some-odd athletes between football, baseball, men's and women's basketball, softball, soccer, tennis, golf, whatever, sports, 300-some-odd athletes. One compliance officer and one academic advisor. That's how you run into eligibility issues. That's how your star freaking player, Isaiah Land, who led the country in sacks, who's the number one HBCU prospect heading into the 2023 NFL draft, misses a prime time opportunity against an FBS Power 5 school in UNC. It can quite possibly miss another prime time opportunity on ESPN against the defending SWAC champions, Coach Prime and the Jackson State Tigers. It's, it's sad, man. That that is sad. Now, Tom Mars put out the lawyer. Remember, Tom Mars is the lawyer representing Cam Corvin and Isaiah Lamb. He put out something very interesting earlier today. He put out a. a legislate a piece of document essentially from the NCAA and he wrote this in a tweet 
and we're not going to read the entire uh, thing, but you can read it and, I, and we'll show it on the screen. It says, Dear NCAA and Family Football, just a friendly reminder. Now, this came before, you know, the Pete Thamel tweets. Just a friendly reminder that the NCAA D1 Legislative Council has addressed the NCAA's ability to grant eligibility waivers under, quote, extraordinary circumstances, even when granting waivers results in a, quote, temporary rule change in these limited instances. So what Tom Mars is trying to show is that there is a precedent that has been set where the NCAA can come in and grant specialty waivers for players that are in extraordinary circumstances. Well, fam, you having 26 ineligible players, one compliance officer and one academic advisor covering 300 some odd athletes, student athletes, that is, sounds like an ex ex extraordinary circumstance. And then he went on to say that the rule actually says that the waivers can be granted even when there are rules already in place. Quote, temporary rule changes in these limited instances. This would be a limited instance because this ain't something you see every day. Eligibility problems are something you see all the time, but you don't see eligibility problems when it's just simply because students change majors or the school didn't put the grades in. Essentially what Willie Simmons in the tweet Pete Thamel put out that Willie Simmons told him. That is an extraordinary circumstance. And Tom Mars could be on to something there. And I'm sure he's already contacted the NCAA. Then he went, go, went on to actually show the document from the NCAA that was updated back on February 15th of 2022. So this, now he goes on to say, this specific authority to grant waivers under extraordinary circumstances was never mentioned in the waiver request submitted by FAMU for Isaiah Lynn or Cameron Covid. If more than 20 players being declared ineligible is an extraordinary circumstance, what is? That's what we just said. If over 20 players, like I said, one, two, three max is what I've seen. Three max on any given team, football team, basketball team, softball team, baseball team, whatever, when it comes to compliance and things like that, being ruled ineligible, whether it's academically ineligible because you're transferred or whatever. But 26? Yeah, that, that doesn't happen, ever. People say, oh, we run into these issues at other big-time schools. Not 26 damn players on one team. No, you don't. That doesn't happen. That's why this made national news. Be, not just because it was in a game against UNC. It was because the number was so damn large. 26 players? So, yes, this is an extraordinary circumstance. Yes, this is... Nothing like what most of us have ever seen before. So Mars makes a good point. The NCAA could possibly, this is the case that he's trying to make, the NCAA could possibly grant a temporary rule change waiver or an extraordinary circumstance eligibility waiver. And that is what Coach Simmons, Tom Mars, and what FAMU as an institution should be hoping for to get Isaiah Land on the football field this Sunday against Jackson State. To get Cam Coven to start in right tackle on the football field this weekend against Jackson State. If you want any chance of beating Jackson State. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? If you want any chance of these young men to continue to proudly rep fam you for the rest of their lives. Because you're playing with these young men's lives. You're playing with these young men's future. And their lawyer, their coach, and they, they themselves are trying to, any and everything in their power to make it happen, to be eligible this weekend, to get back on the field. Now, the fact that you were able to get nine guys eligible that weren't eligible last week is a good step in the right direction. But let's work on getting those other 17. Let's work on getting Isaiah Land. Let's work on getting Cam Coven. Let's work on getting B.J. Bowler. Let's work on getting the guys that can impact the game this weekend. Let's do it. Do what you need to do. Help these young men out because it was your fault in the first place. It looks like it was your fault in the first place. So the best thing you can do, the very minimum you can do, is help them get their eligibility back. Missing four games is unacceptable. Unacceptable when it comes to changing majors and grades not being put in.
I mean, am I tripping? Let me know in the comments. Am I tripping? Like, I I am I reading this wrong? Does this not say? Does this not say? I mean, just let me know. Let me know in the chat. Let me know in the comments. Does this not say? This is the tweet from Pete Thamel. It comes directly after this one. It says, FAMU, Coach Willie Simmons says that they're down to just 17 from 26 last week. Those guys have made the trip to Miami, and we're hoping to bring the other 17 once they get clear. It goes on to say, the very next tweet, he said the vast majority of the eligibility issues were a clerical nature. Changes of majors or grades that didn't show up in the system. Grades not showing up in the system sounds like somebody didn't put the damn grades in the system. And you know how that can happen? When one compliance officer is responsible for 300 students. 300 student athletes one one academic advisor and one compliance officer is responsible for over 300 student athletes that's how you have these type of problems clerical nature clerical problems not not the not the kids not going to class not the kids not doing the school work not the kids not making the grades the grades not being submitted the paperwork not being done the staff being understaffed and one person being responsible for 300 student athletes. That's a problem. That's a major problem. And fam, you needs to be doing any and everything to make this right. And so for the folks to be like, oh, this falls on the head. Student athletes should know what type of grade, what type of classes they should take. I'm not saying they shouldn't. But just imagine if you didn't know what type of class you took. You took those classes. You knew what it took to be to graduate. You passed those classes. You turned in your paperwork. You signed, sealed, delivered, did everything that was in your control. But because one staff member was overworked, your stuff didn't get submitted the way it was supposed to. And now you can't play. Imagine that. Because that's what it seems like it's taking place at FAMU. The young men, that the student athletes did what they were supposed to do, signed up for the right classes, did the right stuff, Tur did their grades, got their grades, passed their classes, did what they were supposed to do, sent all their stuff in, and somehow, some way, were still deemed academically ineligible because of clerical errors, because grades aren't showing up in the system. That is a problem. That is sad. That is unfortunate. That is wrong. That is messed up. That is everything in the book. And so you add that to the fact that guys like Isaiah Lynn and others are claiming that they were misadvised when it comes to what, what classes they should have took. I mean, you, you got to be kidding me, dog. You got to be kidding me. Somebody, somebody, nobody, somebody should answer for it. Nobody will. So let, let me put this out there because I've I seen, uh, I seen some stuff. I think it was Roland Martin. He was saying, like, somebody needs to come out and answer this. The president of FAMU, somebody needs to, because they don't have an AD, because they fired their AD or he resigned or whatever. And now he's over at Tulane. And they were like, somebody should answer this. Nobody's going to answer for this. Who would want to take the blame on something like this? Who wants to be the one to come and face the, you know, put their feet to the fire and face the public after this mess up, after this big old F up? Nobody. So nobody's going to. Of course they should, but nobody's going to. Man, I just hope these young men are able to play against Jackson State, man. That'll be a, a crime, a sin and a shame if Isaiah Land isn't on that field in Miami on Sunday. A sin and a damn shame if he's not. If Kim Coven, if B.J. Bowler, if some of these other guys aren't on that field against Shador Sanders, against Aubrey Miller, against the Jackson State Tigers, coached by Deion Sanders, Dennis Thurman, Brett Bartoloni, and the rest of those guys over there at JSU. That'd be a shame. That'd be a shame we won't see good on good or best on best. Because, fam, you had a legit shot. It still does, even without the guys. They still have a legit shot of winning this thing. But it's just a lot tougher without your best player. It's a lot tougher without your starting right tackle. It's a lot tougher with your best – defensive back it's a whole lot tougher to beat those guys without these guys without your guys to beat those guys without your guys not saying it's impossible just a lot tougher just a whole lot tougher 
We'll see what happens. We'll keep updating this story as more information becomes available. Once again, my name is Jeff Lights Jr. with the Black Boss Channel with Victor Formation. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for tuning in. Continue to hit that thumbs up button, like, share, and subscribe. And like I said, we will continue to update this story as more information is made available. Thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Also, subscribe to the YouTube channel on the road to 4,000. Continue to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. See you next time. Peace.